All right, hey guys. This is a tutorial to do a fog edit in this gorgeous ANA Special 777s. So, the best photos to do a fog edit is either during the blue hour or in a cloudy day. As you can see, we already have some faint clouds here, which is perfect because it will bring a lot more texture to our fog. First thing first, let's open up this file in Photoshop. In this camera raw window, let's brighten this plane a little bit, increase the contrast and textures. Finally, hit that denoise button. Set it to um, maybe 80% and hit OK. This will make our base image a lot cleaner. Let's open up this image. What you want to do at this point is duplicate the image, create an inverted mask, and do a path selection. Let's name this Plane Selection. Whichever way you do it doesn't really matter, but I usually do this with Pen Tool to get a nice clean edge. After tracing the entire plane and with your mask layer selected, right-click on the path, fill path, make sure your foreground color is white and hit OK. Then, use your brush tool to paint the small details around the plane. After that, let's deal with the background first. Let's duplicate the base layer and convert it into a smart object. Open up Camera Raw and let's boost the contrast by a lot to bring out the clouds. This will make our plane looks really bad, but don't worry about that. For now, let's focus only on the background. At any point, feel free to pause this video and copy the setting I did. After that, we want to basically remove the color in the sky. So, we open up a hue saturation adjustment layer and drop the saturation of all the color to between minus 50 to minus 90. Play with the lightness a little bit to bring out the textures. If it is still too bright, bring down the curves to add the contrast even more and we are done with the background. Let's duplicate our plane along with the mask, and same as before, let's convert it into a smart object. So, what we want to do here is to bring out the colors on this livery and to make them shiny. This is perfect because our background is white. We want to make these colors to be the first thing that capture your attention when you see this image. Because I took this image in around sunset, there are a hint of yellow and red on the plane that we don't want. So let's add several hue saturation layers, and let's do a selective color removal. Let's set the saturation to 100% to see the color more clearly. But be careful though, because this livery also has yellow and red on them. So in this mask, we brush out the part we want to erase. Adjust the saturation and invert the mask by pressing Ctrl I. Do the same thing with the red color. After that, let's do a selective color layer and bring out the colors even more.
Okay, at this point, let's do what's called a dodge and burn process. We take two curves, one up and one down. Let's name these dark and light. Makes a lot more sense than dodge and burn. Let's invert the mask. Basically, we want to paint the part of the plane that is dark and part of the plane that is light. This is important if you want your plane to have a shine. You definitely should take your time doing this. With your light mask selected, hit Image, Apply Image, then OK. With your dark mask, do the same thing, but check the Invert button. Depending on how shiny you want your plane to look, we can adjust the feather. Increase the feather to make the shine more subtle. Add a final curve for good luck, and we are done with the plane! Are you with me so far? All right, you can stop at this point because the image already looks good. We have a dramatic sky, the plane looks nice and shiny, all well and good. But this is not what you come here to see, isn't it? That's right, this is when the magic happens. Let's finally add some fog. First, let's create a mist. Select your base image, hit filter and neural filter. Let's activate Depth Blur and check the Output Depth Map Only button. Hit OK. This will basically create a white filter, some sort of a mist-like effect. Change the blending option to screen, create an inverted mask, set the brush opacity to 10 to 20%, and we are ready to brush. What I usually do is to fog up the bottom half of the plane and leave the top half clear to retain those livery colors. After that, let's add the fog. Create a blank layer, fill it with white. Go to Filter, Render, Difference Cloud. Let's adjust the size of this layer to look realistic. Don't forget to change the blending to screen. After that, go to Blur, Motion Blur, set the direction and distance. Create an inverted mask and brush away just like before. This fog layer is similar to mist, but has more texture in it. There is no right way of doing this, but just remember, the way that fog works is that the closer object has less fog, while the further object has more fog. Basically, you want to do these for at least two to three layers to create a sense of depth. If you have the patience, the more the better. If you feel the fog is too strong, reduce the fill of the layer. After you completed this tedious process, we are ready for the most satisfying part, the vortex trails. So if you see some reference photos online of a foggy landing, the point where wing vortex usually created is here and here. Not so much on the tail, but we will add it just for the fun of it. Same as before, let's create a fog layer and brush a line starting from the wingtips.
If you want to go a step further, you can even add a wing condensation or wing fluff. This is also a great way to cover up those minor imperfections in your image. That's it. Your fog and mist layers are done. Finally, let's add a landing light. Create a blank layer. With rectangular selection tool, add a gradient. Right-click, distort, and adjust it to make a triangle shape. Set the blending to overlay. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, adjust the amount, and hit OK. Let's clean up this landing light a little bit. The way I organize my layers this way is because if you want to make changes to any of your layer, you still can. After you are satisfied with all of the settings, hold and press Ctrl, Alt, Shift E to combine all of the layer. Let's convert this final layer into a smart object. And at last, we will do some final touches. We will add a directional lighting. In this case, the light will come from the top right of the image. If you want to make changes to any of your layer, you just simply hide the final layer and made your changes. At the end, we will copy the settings we did before to the new one. Open up your old camera raw filter, right click, copy selected edit setting, select all, and hit copy. On your new image, right click and paste edit settings. This will save you a lot of time correcting this final layer. We are finally done. Congratulations. You just made a fog edit. I hope you like this video. I would greatly appreciate it if you leave this video a like and subscribe for more contents in the future. If you did find this video helpful, I would be pleased if you tag me in your own edit on Instagram. Alright, thank you for watching.